Hey guys, Shaver1000 here. Let's see what's wrong with this Craftsman 18 inch 40cc chainsaw. It'll start up, rev up a couple times, and stall. Let's check it out together. Okay guys, like I mentioned, I put a I put a new primer bulb and fuel lines and filter in this. I don't know if I filmed that or not. It starts right up every time. Rev it up a few times and then it stalls. Like it's out of fuel. So I'm suspecting that diaphragm is bad in this carburetor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the diaphragm in this carburetor. I have a new one over here and I'll show you what's going on with them. I don't know if I filmed this one or not, but anyway, let's get you down here where you guys can see something. Alright, I'll try not to get in your way too bad. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these two nuts off here. I've already, I've already, as you can see, you know, I've already took the top off. Save a little time. It's only three screws. Okay. So we're also, what we're going to do is we're going to strip this carburetor down. And we're going to put it in the carburetor cleaner, which I have finished straining. I strained it out twice. I strained it out with an old cut off piece of, uh, of a pillowcase here. And then I strained it with a coffee filter. So, alright, so I'm just going to take that off of there. There's the carburetor. Alright, make note of where the lines are. That line goes up in there. Short line goes right there. So let's go ahead and take that off. Okay. Take uh, if I can the bottom line off here. There we go. Now we're gonna pull the choke up off, and then the this is how the throttle hooks on. It's just got like that. Just goes on. And, I usually take the bars off these things so they're easier to work on. Here, I'll show you this real quick. Hey, okay. let's take it and turn it. See? Just like that. Alright, now we can move this out of the way. We're done with this. So let me just set this over here. Right under here is that diaphragm. I think I've showed you those before. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the whole. We need to get this choke thing off of here, but first we need to see how it goes. Okay. okay. Alright, we got the choke off. We're going to be, this time we're going to be taking these out. Um, it takes a special little screwdriver that if you read on the forms, there's people saying you can't get them. You can't get those. Uh, you can't order them. I didn't have a fucking problem. I got ten of them for nine bucks. So, alright, and I got fifteen of these diaphragms, which will do anything I'm doing on these carburetors. Yours may look a little different, but it'll be fine. Trust me. I got fifteen of those for seven bucks, but I went ahead and paid a little extra. To have them here today. I ordered them Sunday. I got them here today. It's Wednesday. They were here at about 11:30 this morning, uh, and that was coming through snail mail, believe it or not. Okay, so I've got my little tool pile right here next to me. Let's go ahead. I just want to check this out. Okay, let's make sure. Okay, see this tab here. Never seen one with these one of these on here before, but that's okay. It goes. Remember, remind me, guys. It goes towards. The adjusting screws there. 
They're actually called mixture screws for low and high speed. And these um these you can use a Phillips a Phillips head or a small straight uh, standard head. Which this one's too big, of course, but you get the idea. I don't know where to put the small one. I thought I had it out here, but apparently I don't. Yeah, see, I'm getting fuel out of here, so I'm guessing it wasn't. It was kind of like your your float in a regular carburetor being stuck um, open, which or stuck up, which would be closing off your fuel. That doesn't feel that bad, really, guys. So, I might just get by with cleaning. See, that's nice and firm. Now, I've showed you this before, guys. I'll show you again. See, here's an old one. See how that shouldn't do that. Well, here's a new one. See how flimsy that is. See that? Just like just like a piece of cloth or something and this one's just that's what they get like now this though this feels pretty good see how pliable that is but it could be could have a problem getting fuel after this so we're going to go ahead and soak it for a couple hours And it is kind of, it is kind of goofy a little bit, but I mean that's enough for it to work. Um, but since I have the new ones, I am going to put a new one on it. And the problem is, I forgot to order gaskets. So I gotta reuse the gasket if I can. So all I'm trying to do is just peel that away from that gasket without ripping the gasket. Yeah, see this? I'm gonna put a new one on it, but this is not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, it's actually fairly decent. I mean, since I've got a new one out here, that's pretty pliable. So, hmm. Yeah, that's uh, pretty weird. It's a little different, but it's okay as long as it goes on there. So I can reuse this. If you don't scratch them up or anything, or bend them, or crack them, they won't leak. They'll be fine. This one looks okay. Alright, let's see what's under here. Not too bad. Uh, but, let's go ahead. I'll tell you what, let's, we are going to go ahead and clean it. Now, here is my... Alright. This is what they are. Ordered this e eBay, I do believe, off of a store on eBay. I can't remember the name of the store. I'd put a link, but just look it up. There it is. A set of ten of them with case. All right, it was nine dollars for shipping. Now, yeah, I don't know why the guys are saying, you know, on on that forum I went to, you can't you can't find them. They won't let you do it because they don't want amateurs working on their stuff and. Uh, that's just not the case. Um, for this set here, like I said, it was nine bucks. All right, now <laughs> it, it's um it's crazy because Wish, you know, everyone knows about Wish. It's cheap stuff, it just takes forever to get to you. Well, here's the thing: the same exact set without without the the case. There was ten of them, but there's no case. Fifteen bucks, 
and it wasn't going to be until February 18th to March 20 something so uh, screw that so alright this as you can see if I can get my camera to look at this right see they're splined can you see them splines there you go see they're splined so I need to I've got little pictures on them so I need to find the one with a whole bunch of splines it should say there it is this is it here so it gives you a little picture so it says splined it's got a whole bunch of come on focus so it's got a whole bunch of little splines on it there you go and I don't know if yeah see the splines in there see if that fits and it does okay now some of these guys um, let me tell you about these some of these are a little different on these here so I'm going to take one out like this it's the farthest right from the fuel tube okay, see there's a little little piece of plastic there see it And these springs, they keep them from unadjusting, I guess you could say. Let's see if these are the same. Okay, they look like they're the same. Except for this one's got the deal that came out with it. But I'm still going to set them... In this container, the one on the right for the one on the right, and one's on the left for the one on the left. Right. And here's our springs. They go like that. I'm just gonna set them there for now. Now I need to I need to know if there is one of them things down in here that didn't come out. Because if there is Chances are that carburetor cleaner may screw it up. Yes, it's down in there. They make a tool to get these out. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that one out. But we will. So let's... Just like that one I showed you. On the... Uh, the spring it does not need to go in the cleaner this does not need to go in the cleaner our pin does not need to go in the cleaner this does not need to go in the cleaner as you can see it's clean and plus it's got that rubber tip that can get screwed up I want to see if this is remember the one had that that screen in it. This one does not have that, okay? So, this is the uh, idle adjustment. So, I'm going to take this out and go ahead and, okay, nice and clean basket. Now, let's take this off of here. carburetor doesn't look all that bad. I don't know why I'd be having issues like that. Unless it's this this thing, but um, they seem to be yeah, they're pliable. So, I'm not I'm not sure I'd say just one of the little passages may have a slight clog to it. Now, now granted, I didn't try to adjust it because it sounded real good. 
So I thought, well, I might even want to try to adjust it. So let's see the. Uh, let's take this. One. Okay, so the gasket part. See the lines in the gasket? It's because of this. The lines on here. So that's telling us the gasket will go down like this. Okay, so I'm just going to set that over there. Uh, I can put that in there. So if there's anything else we can take out. I'm not messing with the butterflies. You should never have to mess with them butterflies. If you got to mess with the butterflies, there's other issues. Oops. Okay, so there's the choke. Full choke, half choke, wide open choke, and wide open throttle. See? So. That is wide open throttle right there. No more, no less. It's wide open throttle. Okay, so. Um. blow through okay so these are pretty clear um, I'm just kind of curious how I'm going to get that piece of uh, that piece of uh, plastic or rubber out of there I should say rubber it's not really plastic plastic but got a little piece of wire here. Where'd you go? So what I'm going to do is get it just to where it'll go in there, and then once it goes in, it may catch and pull it up out. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. I got you in close because I want you to see what I'm doing, but maybe I got you in a little too close. Yeah. Well, hopefully, that will squeeze into it, hook it, and bring it out. If I don't launch it across my shop. Okay, see it's starting to come out there. See it down in there? kind of on the crooked side there you go see that there it is so right, let's try that again I don't want to damage it oh there it is that Focus. All right, so the tapered end will go down the end. So let's go ahead and put this back on here. Just just like that, okay? So it looks like the other one. I'm still going to keep them left to right. Like that. Now these I can put in a parts washer. And I think I'm pretty much, I've pretty much got all the plastic off of here. Well, not pretty much. I do. Alright. So. Alright. Now let's put it into our... I had a late start today. Monkey's home. She was tired. I was going to set up today, but it was supposed to rain, and it hasn't rained yet, so it kind of upsets me. But I did set up to sell for, what was it, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I did do six days in a row. She says that's enough. <laughs> like, all right, who am I to argue, right? Okay, so now... Okay, we got this little screw. Where'd our thing go? There it is. 
what this oh okay this goes for the, uh, the uh, what you call it I guess what could what also could be happening I should have ordered some of these too but these they go bad but not as often as as these diaphragms do see now that that that's a pretty good diaphragm I will save this diaphragm to put it in something just to to test before we you know put a new one in on something so. see that's uh those feel pretty good I'm not gonna mess with that I don't think that was the issue although it could have been I, I don't think it was but so uh, I think there may have been a piece of dirt in there it could have just needed adjusted but that's okay I want to do carburetor cleaning so let's back you the rest of the way out here let's uh, take move this stuff out of the way so I did I did get my uh, I did get it cleaned out you don't see any of the metal shavings in it anymore so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this I'd like to uh, keep it from you know uh, touching clear down to bottom if I could but because that's where everything goes but since it's clean I'm not gonna worry about it got it down in there now I'm just gonna put my lid on and we are looking at 245 put that on there we're going to come back oh in about an hour I think because this carburetor is not that bad I've got the air compressor uh, I had it fired up it's up to 140 psi that needs to be clean but I'm not going to soak it in there because you're not supposed to put rubber or plastic parts in it although I have done it I think you seen me do it on the last one uh, it didn't hurt anything but I do have uh, some carb spray that monkey bought for me that we will be cleaning We'll just spray a little bit on here. Maybe even just blow it out with compressed air. But anyway, the compressed, my compressor's ready to go. Uh, it's got a knock in it. I don't know. I don't think it's in the compressor head itself, compressor motor. I don't think that's the issue. I'm not sure where the knock's coming from. But anyway, I'll be getting her dad's and bring it out here. It's a pretty decent one. I don't know if it's 140 PSI or not, but if it's not, I'll make it 140 PSI. <laughs> I'll just crank her all the way up, but anyway. Yeah, see, so that's... But yeah, that... Uh, yeah, see, that doesn't look... See how nice and whoops, pliable that is? That's what they're supposed to be like. I don't think there's... But like I said, I'll save that one, but this is, is an example of an old one here. Uh, the gasket's good on this one so we will be saving the gasket because I have more carburetors to do this is out of an old carburetor that I had replaced the whole carburetor so I have a couple old carburetors but I save them for shit like this see? So, now yours may differ um, see like see how that one shaped the new ones kind of it that doesn't really matter as long as whoops see this kind of and this one's a little different on the side but if you can see the holes will line up if them holes line up you're okay all right so we're all right there so anyway we will be putting a new one in I will save this gasket but yeah, as you can tell, see, it's good there, but see how that's sticking up there like that. And this one just flops around, see. And that one don't. But, alright, so, alright, we're going to be back here in about an hour. Set that aside. Uh, like I said, it's. About 257 or uh, 347, 349. So we'll come back to 49. We'll come back to 349. All right, guys. 
hang tight. Alright guys, we're back. It's been an hour and 15 minutes. I let it soak for an hour. And then I went ahead and blew everything out with compressed air. I got this looking all clean, pretty nice. This is all cleaned up nice and neat. Somewhat. There we go. So that's all looking pretty good. Got this kind of cleaned out there the best it's going to get. So now, time to reassemble this. Alright, so we're going to start with our, let me uh, move this up here, out the way. Okay, start with our needle valve. kind of hard for me to do this now I don't have no feeling in my right hand but that's okay okay make sure we get the spring in there right Got to get get our pin in there. There we go. Yep, spring is good. Now let's put our little screw in here. Just like that. Make sure it's not locked up in any way, so it seems to be working good. Okay, so what that what this um what this diaphragm does? Oh, this is the old one, but this right here see, goes in there, and that goes up and down, and opens and closes when it needs fuel pushes down like that which opens that needle valve and when it don't it comes back up which closes the needle valve okay now, I thought this didn't have a one of those screens in it but I was looking on the wrong end and there it is it does have a screen in it so but the screen looks good everything's uh, all blown out nice and neat so it's looking pretty good alright so let's go ahead We'll put our diaphragm on here, which should go, let's see, that's going to go back like that, so, yeah, these always confuse me, just like, just like that, see, and these right here, They'll open and close when they need to open and close. Okay. This is going to go on this side, just like that. Okay. Because uh, this end here, that's where your that's where your um, idle screw goes for adjusting your idle. Maybe we should just boom. Put it on there. And we'll flip this over. Put it like that. Make sure it's all the way. See how flat that is all the way around there. It's not cockeyed. Like if you get it like that, that's not right. So okay. Now the screw in as you can see this is a wall bro it's upside down but it is a wall bro carburetor um, that's funny I cannot find a 
my straight screwdriver, my standard. We we'll just use the Phillips. That's weird. Alright, there's that. Okay, hang on guys, I got a memory card blank in here. Alright, got that taken care of. Now, I'm going to get this put on. This is going to go on like this. Remember, this goes down like that. Make sure your holes line up, and they do. Now remember, I said this went where the uh, mixture screws go in, which is right there. So that goes like that. Now we're going to put <coughs> put our little tiny screws in here. I always do a cross, a cross pattern. Um, this it really doesn't make any difference. I'm just used to doing it with wheels, flywheels, uh, water pump bolts. It just anything that spins like that. I got used to doing that. I got into that habit, so now it's just kind of, kind of what I do something like this it's not necessary just a matter of preference I guess now this what this does is this will hold it will go on like that and your two little adjusting your mixtures, low and high mixture there, and your uh, your uh, idle there, which will go like this when it's on the saw. Okay, so now get that on there. Now let's take this off. See, there's your your high and low. Can you see the H and L right there? high and low okay, so see if I can uh, this I think that this is the way it goes and I've kept our mixture screws left and right though they are the same just uh, you know it's just the way the way they came out so that's the way I'm putting them back in We have an issue with this, it looks like. Maybe not. Like that. <clears throat> now 
of these. Come on. I gotta get that push down in there. I'm not uh, not liking this. It's wanting to cross thread on me, so let's pull this out. Pull this one out. If I cross thread this, I done screwed up the whole uh, carburetor, so I do not want to do that. in now okay so now let's <clears throat> go like this start this one first nice feels good this one See, they should be straight across, and they are. This one's going in fine. I'm just going to take them until they touch, what they call naturally touch. So you don't want to like tighten it like you're tightening a uh, screw. There, it just bottomed out. You'll feel it touch. Okay, same way with this one low side okay now I'm going to take these out one turn so I know about where that is so right there okay so there's about a half a turn there's about a turn right there okay so let's make sure this is in okay same way about a half a turn that's about a turn. That should be enough to get us running. Okay. Now let's put our <clears throat> idle adjusting screw in there. Just like that. Now what that does, it's got that uh man, I like what I did with my screwdriver. That's weird. What that does, I can use this I guess, is it's got a like a, see it's like a V and then as you screw this in it opens this up it pushes that away and then as you back it out it closes it so maybe you can see right here as I'm screwing that in so we look down there at the bottom now I'll screw it out and that gap will go away but you get the idea okay so I'm just going to leave it just want a little bit of gap through there just enough alright just like that now it's time to put the carburetor together okay so that's what we're going to do next make sure I'm not forgetting anything this is going to be like like that I can back you out now okay All right, so let's get the saw up here and let's get the carburetor put back on it alright so this is how the carburetor is going to go so let's get our choke let's get it put back in it'll just push right in there just like that now we need to get our let's go ahead and hook our throttle cable or our throttle back up just like that. So 
I know you can't see it, but it goes in there and then goes like this. Now, whoops, sorry guys. I've already got the gasket down in there as you can see it never came off so that's good so right here we can get our fuel line up on there we go it's going I'm go ahead and trying to learn to use my left hand more and, uh, it's kind of a pain I don't know if I should See. I just want to make sure that fuel line is not going to be in the way of the throttle linkage. Okay. Like this. Then we'll put the other one on here in a second. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put this back up on here and see. Yeah, see, something's binding up. So it's probably, yeah. It's that fuel line, so let's there we go. I want to run the fuel line behind the throttle linkage. So we're going to run it up behind. Let's go ahead and pull this off for a second. There we go. It's got to go up behind it. Some of these are bent a little different than others, but um, they're all pretty much the same. Now let's go ahead and put this on. Right there. Now we're going to get our other fuel line up here onto the other side put it on make sure it's all the way up on because you don't want that coming off or you go to prime it you'll fill this up with fuel okay now we're going to put this on there and this is what we've got okay just like that let's give it a little throttle here yeah see it's working good. All right, now go ahead and put this on just like that. And our two little uh, 10 millimeter or what I got on here, 5 sixteenths. Yeah, 10 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. These don't get tight enough to where you got to worry about stripping it out. It will be fine, okay? As Terrell, Terrell Dactyl, Terrell fixes all. Check his channel out. He does a lot of this stuff. It's, like he says, it's not the space shuttle. You know, so. <laughs> and he's right. And these things are not like carburetors on cars. There's no, like, intermediate throttle because you're either wide open or you're idling. Wide open or idling. You're not just like, you know half you know half throttle you're not going to half throttle this thing you go to cut you're going to open it up and throttle it so you don't 
have to it, it's these carburetors don't have to be as persnickety as they do on a car so alright so there's that and there's our little hole holes there to get into that to get into that and also the top one okay so make sure that's not it's kind of got some creases in there from where this is at, where this sits. So you have to be kind of careful putting this on here. Now also on these, I want to tell you, the T, some of those will have an I for idle. That one has a T for throttle. And then you got your L for low and your H for high adjustments. Okay, so I want to make sure that we're not crimping that cable um, cable the, uh, there we go the uh, spark plug wire all right so let's go ahead and I don't have the right thing on here do I no I do not leave this is it. super tight all it's doing is holding this cover on all right now getting chilly outside i'm gonna grab my jacket let's take this outside and um make sure nothing make sure the choke is working i'm gonna put some fuel in it and then we'll take it outside and we'll uh we'll try to adjust the carburetor the idle it is if it runs good so now these these caps okay see this is a 40 to 1 mix all right now these caps if you notice they're at an angle okay now the reason why that is you guys know if you use these that one's the same way for your bar oil if you use these sometimes they're real hard to get off that is so you can put if I'm a straight screwdriver your screwdriver in there or your little tool some of them's got the little tool that you can adjust the bar take the um, the spark plug out and it also has a straight edge for now as you notice it's made so you can't tighten it that way so it wants to come up out so it's made so you can use that to take that out, okay? So let's put some fuel down in here. Make sure that, okay. All right, I do have a new filter in it. I'm using this stuff here. I love this stuff, there's no ethanol in it. So, see it's 40, 40 to one or 50 to one. It seems to run good in anything I put it in. Let's wipe this funnel out so there's a little bit of dirt in there. That, believe it or not, a little bit of dirt can cause you all kinds of problems. So clean your funnels out. Alright. Put that in there. Just very little in here. So. See, it's just got a greenish tint to it. That's your oil. Okay, so there's that. This over here. We got about a half a tank in there. So let's put our make sure it's got enough. Yeah. All right. Let me get my jacket on. Let's go outside, start this up, and adjust the carburetor. Okay, let's see if this thing will start up and run. I've got me an assortment of tools up there just in case. I got the Phillips for the idle, and I've got the uh, spline for the carburetor adjustment. 
Let's flip it on. Six times. Full choke. Set the throttle lock. Pull it five times. Open the choke. And it should start. There it goes. Sounds like the chain is a little tight. So let's take care of that real quick. Then we'll try to cut a piece of wood. This is that tool I was telling you about. Okay. So all you do is you loosen these two. These two nuts right here. I'm not sure what size they are. They're different on some of them are really big. Then you loosen this nut or this screw a little bit and you'll see that bar dropping down see that's too loose so let's tighten her up a little bit more all right let's go a little bit looser because sometimes they will tighten up and sometimes they'll they'll uh, loosen up so usually they'll loosen up Let's give that a shot and see what happens. Alright, let's go try to cut a piece of wood. It's still got a little bulb to it. Let's adjust the carburetor a little bit. Hear how it's smoothed out? Not quite yet. Chain's a little tight. Let's loosen this chain up some more. 
I'm going to mess with this and then I'll be back with you. And we'll go from there. Hang on, guys. All right, guys. Much better. Okay guys, so here's the box. I'm just going to take it outside and and uh, hose it off and clean it up. It's got a place for an extra spark plug. This is where the T-handle goes. And uh, I come in and Monkey so graciously put me an old towel since she bought new ones on my chair for me. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so uh, there's some more stuff that's supposed to go here. I don't have that stuff, but you know, I will give them the T-handle, maybe an extra spark plug, but, you know, I mean, for 50 bucks, come on, right? So I'm going to take this out and hose it off. I may sh spray some of this on it, and I'll show it to you once I get it all cleaned off, and I'll give you our closing thoughts. All right, guys, here it is all cleaned up. I gave them an extra spark plug. It is a good plug. It's used, but it is a good plug. I've got it. It's not looking like brand new, but, you know, I mean, for 50 or 60 bucks, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to put 65 on it and I'll come down, but I won't take any less than 50. Hell, they want 20 bucks just for these, these boxes used. I wouldn't. If I had an extra case, I'd probably sell it for 10, but I'm different. I'm not out to get rich off of somebody. So, let's put the saw in there. So first we'll put our sleeve on there. This is an 18 inch cut. Then this just slides in there like that. And that lives there. Give her a quick wipe down. I'll wipe it down again too tomorrow before I sell it. So it's presentable. Uh, the main thing is it runs great and it'll fire right up for them. So, anyway, there's that. Now let's go ahead and close this up like that. Then this comes down just like that. And it's got a little lock, lock thing for it, but like I said, it's not like brand new, but not supposed to be it's used if it was like brand new it'd be eighty dollars instead of fifty right but these ones aren't the ones you can buy for a hundred bucks because those are the polens you can buy a polen saw for a hundred bucks on sale sometimes this is a craftsman I'll look it up maybe I'll ask more I don't know I'll see what they're selling for it that's another thing a lot of people do well, they're selling on eBay for this amount. I'm like, are they selling for that or asking for that? I look for what was sold, you know what I mean? And then go from there, and I'll beat anybody's prices. You know, this saw is paid for. It's it's one of the ones I got, remember, off that guy when I got the blower and the weed eater with all the attachments? It came from him. This is the main thing I went to look at. He had 20 bucks on it. Ended up buying everything for 50 well, that saw uh, cost nothing. I already made a profit off just the weed eater and the attachments. The blower, I've got nothing in. I've got nothing in any of this stuff. So, all right, there you guys go. All right, so, this is weird. Monkey made me supper tonight. She was off today, and she took it easy all day. That was good to see. I took it easy for a while with her until my new... Uh, diaphragms came in, metering diaphragms, and then I came out and got to work. So it's getting dark out now, and uh, I'm going to pick up some of my tools. I don't know if I'm going to do the blower or not. I had some issues with it. It was running fine. Took it out to sell it. Went to start it the next morning. Wouldn't start, wouldn't start all day long. It was flooding out. 
end of the day. I pulled it one time, fired right up. So I don't know. I think it's in a metering. I think it's this thing stuck in the down position, which would be causing it to get too much fuel. But I'll have to check it out. I don't know if I'm going to do that tonight. Uh, but I might. We'll see. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. There you go. Craftsman chainsaw, 18-inch cut, 40cc. Good running saw. All right. Shea Bear, the myth, man, the legend. Thanks for hanging out in the garage with me and doing some wrenching. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Take care.